Welcome, everybody. It is so good to be with you today. I'm Pastor Jack Holt from the river. I've got my wife, Joyce, with me. And we want to give you some truth today that I think will enable you to overcome in your life. I've called this message, It's Always Coming When You Call It In. And I'm talking about a principle of faith where you call in the very thing that you need in your life. And sometimes people are not aware there are some principles and some spiritual laws that have to be demonstrated in your life to get miracles. And the way to learn that is, is through the Word of God and to come to church, you know. So we encourage you, you know, the life of Christ is not just, okay, Sunday morning, you know, and we're done. You know, it, it's a daily walk. And you'll be amazed for those of you that maybe are just doing a Sunday morning or not even doing that, that if you dive in, it's just like any relationship, you know. You have yeah. to be purposeful and, and I guess for lack of better way of, of saying, you know, you need to know the rules and regulations. You know, God has this universe, you know, humans on, on a system. And when we can get plugged into that, that way, that His ways, Amen. you know, our life can be incredible. So get into the Word right now with us as we begin to study it. You're going to see this principle of calling those things which be not as though they were calling into your life prosperity, calling into your life health, calling into your life that opportunity that you, that God put in your heart. So join us now as we go right into our service. Turn to a few people and say, I need to call it out. And you can be seated. Amen. I've entitled the message today, It's Always Coming When You Call It. And I'm talking about calling the promises of God into your life instead of calling into your life your fears, calling into your life your anxieties, calling in your life your doubts, calling in your life the things that you dread in your life. I'm talking about calling in the promises of God in your life because if you keep calling them in, they keep coming. They'll always be coming in your life. They'll always be manifested in your life if you keep calling them in. It's when we stop calling them in and start calling into the wrong things that we have trouble. If you remember the story of the children of Israel that were about ready to go into the promised land, they had sent out 12 princes of each tribe to check out how they could possess the promised land. And they came back, and 10 out of the 12 had a bad report, and they began to call in their fears. We're too small, we're too, not mighty enough, we can't do this. And they were saying that, and they were calling it in. There were two men, Joshua and Caleb, and I wrote this down for reference in Numbers 13, 30, and Numbers 14, 19. Here's what they said. They said, or Caleb says, we are well able to take possession of the land. Let's go do it right now. Joshua said this. He said, there, there are bread. How many know bread doesn't put up much of a fight? And it says, their protection has departed from them, and God is with us. They called in the promise of God that had given them the land, and not called in their fears and their concerns that they were outnumbered, that they were facing people that had military training, and they had been slaves all of, uh, for the last 430 years. But they called in the promise. You always find the promises of God connected with calling in God's promises. Now, you can't call in something God didn't promise. You can't call in someone that Ellis's wife. Can you say Amen. But you can call in anything that God has promised in your life. And you always find this pattern in Scripture where there's always this calling in that occurs before the manif manifestation of the promise occurs in the person's life. Now, what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to teach you a biblical view concerning end times. Because in the church today, there's a lot of different views that are unscripturally based in Scripture they come from fears. They come from concerns. And people are not calling in the, what God has promised to. Instead, they're calling in their fears and all those things that keep them up at night 
and give them ulcers and wreck their health. Amen? So let's look at this. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And these verses we're going to look at are some of the classic verses that talk about the position of the church, what we should be doing in times like this since we're living in the, in the last of the last days. Amen? Listen to what it says. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his time. Now he's talking about the Antichrist. Now, antichrist, that word anti means instead of Christ or against Christ. And the Bible prophesies that one day there'll be an individual who will be the antichrist who will be revealed in the beginning of the great tribulation. And he will be a one world leader. Can you say amen? He will lead the whole world. There'll be a one world economy. There'll be a one world system. That's why people believe that it'll be a, 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 a currency that, is, that is, has no money to it. But look what it says. Let's go on a little farther. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. In the Greek, it means that when he's taken out of the way, it's in a moment he's taken out of the way. But it says twice that he, referring to the church, is the one that is restraining him. In other words, all the talk about the Antichrist and, and tribulation and all that, none of that can occur as long as we're here. Let me say that again. None of it can happen as long as the church is here because the church is restraining the powers of Satan that will be fully unleashed during the time of the great tribulation. Amen? And here's another thought. He won't be revealed until then. Somebody said, well, this person's name is 666. This person's name is 666. It says it won't be revealed until then. Any speculation is just nothing more than speculation. We won't know who he is. A scripture tells us he comes from Europe. Not from the U.S. Scripture tells us that it comes out of 10 nations. Okay, so the world that we're in right now is in a process of working towards a one world system. We become more globalized. And a lot of people are very concerned about this because they go, we're getting closer to it, we're getting closer to it. But remember, it won't manifest until we're taken out of the way. All hell will not break loose until the church is taken out of the way. And in the Greek, it means in a moment, if you look over 1 Corinthians uh, 15, Paul describes it at the twinkling of an eye. It'll be instant. You'll be sitting in church and the trumpet will blow and bam, you're gone. Now, I don't know about your clothes, whether they'll be here or not, but the reality is you're going to be raptured. But I wanted to bring that out because there's a lot of people that are into, well, I think we're in tribulation right now. No, you're not. We're not. Number one, the technology is not to the place that we can have a global currency at this point in history. We think, we watch movies, you know, uh, uh, you know of the cameras and how they can uh, photo ID everybody. That technology, oh, we're just on the surface of it. The fact is your phone doesn't always recognize you. It's not 100%. Satellites cannot give you 100%. That's you. You can't, there's no technology at this point that you can be surveyed or watched through the whole globe. It's not there. But yet Christians are into that. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't want to do this and do that. But I want you to remember something. The reason why the Antichrist in this great tribulation period doesn't occur is because when the church started, we were given what the Bible calls dunamis. You know what dunamis is? It is the force, the maximum force of an army. In other words, when the church was born, God put the power of Christ in the church. And we're in the midst of all this stuff. Imagine what would happen 
if we weren't in the midst of Hollywood. There are Christians in Hollywood. Imagine what would happen if we weren't in the midst of government. Imagine, imagine how terrible it would be. Imagine what it would be like if we were not in the midst of our court systems. But we are. And imagine what would happen in our families if there weren't believers in the midst of dysfunctional families, in the midst of, in the midst of child abuse. And if there wasn't a believer in there, believe in God. Imagine what would happen. And what will happen is when the church is taken away, the restraining force is removed. Right now, we're postponing it. Why, right now, we're putting it on hold. Right now, we're, we're preventing it from happening in our culture. That's the power of the church. Hallelujah. And we are in a time right now that we need to call in what God's promises say instead of calling fear, instead of calling anxiety, instead of calling fatigue and calling little string and calling anger and calling hostility. We need to call in the blessing of God in our life. It's so important that we do that. But I wanted you to get this glimpse because I've had people come up to me and say, Pastor, uh, I'm, not take, I'm not taking the vaccine. It's the sign of the beast. And, and they give me material on all this. I want to clear that up right now that the, any vaccine that they produce for this virus is not the sign of the beast. Amen. It is impossible to be the sign of the beast. Let me tell you why. Here's how it's, it's set up. Number one, before the Antichrist is revealed, it's going to be a global culture. And there's not going to be all these countries running everything. There's going to be one person in charge of all these different countries and so forth. That has to occur first. And there's got to be a peace treaty uh, with Israel or a covenant that lasts seven years. And it's not like the, the peace treaty they're tr trying to work on now. This is different. This one, there's a one uh, world leader that will make a covenant with Israel. And he will be nice to him for the first three and a half years. And then he will, or he will build the temple within the first three and a half years in Jerusalem. They'll be doing animal sacrifice there. And this Antichrist is going to, after three and a half years, he is going to remove all the altars and all that and set up a throne in Jerusalem, an image of himself that people will be required to worship and, and, and pledge their allegiance to. And if they don't take the sign or the mark of the beast on their hand or their forehead, they will be beheaded. So there's no way that taking a vaccine could be that because you're not worshiping an image or anything else. Now, if you don't want to take the vaccine, that's fine. I don't care about that. I don't want you to think that it's the sign of the beast when it couldn't be the sign of the beast because it won't even be available until three and a half years into the great tribulation. And until I see the temple being rebuilt in Jerusalem and see the Antichrist, then I know that the pre-trib view is still okay. Amen. And so I don't like to be moved by fear and theory. I like to be moved by Scripture. Amen. And the Scripture is very clear on how this transpires. Right now, we do not have a global society. We do in the sense we interact, but there are different people in charge of every country. There's not one person that runs everything. And, it, and, and that was not going to happen until the church is gone because we are the restraining power. Now imagine billions of people being raptured in a moment, what the world's going to be like. Chaos all through the world. And right then, this Antichrist, or instead of Christ, will step forward and he'll become a world leader of this globe. 
and he will build the temple in Jerusalem and he will set up a throne and the image will actually speak to you. It's not a virus or not a, not a I shouldn't say a virus. It is a virus in one sense, it's sin. But it's not an antidote to the virus. It isn't that at all. So there's nothing wrong if they come up with a drug to help you get free just like the flu shot don't have to worry about going to hell come to me later and say pastor i'm going to hell i I took the i took the sign of the beast man they inject me with this i want to just drive that out right now this is the time to call in the promises of god it's not the time to walk by fear it's not the time to be controlled by fear because what would satan like more than anything else for this to continue and continue and continue and continue and continue and kill more people that's exactly what he wants and a lot of christians are buying into it and persecution will up it'll become great in the church if we buy into false teaching that is supporting something that is totally unscriptural at all in any way shape or form someone ought to get excited right now I'm excited about it now that doesn't mean you have to take it but understand if somebody you know takes it don't say oh you're lost forever You're just as saved as you were before. Amen? Are you calling it in or are you calling in your weaknesses? You calling in your fatigue? You calling in your your fears? Calling in your hopelessness? Are you calling in the word of God? Father, I I thank you because if you call it in, it's always coming when you call it in. The moment you stop calling it in is when it stops coming. The blessings will keep following you. They'll keep tracking you down. Hallelujah. They'll track you down in the valley. They'll track you down on the mountaintop. They'll always find you if you keep calling it in. Amen. And so I looked at that. I got so excited because I realized this is the same thing that David did when he faced Goliath. You remember he started saying this Goliath, he's just some uncircumcised Philistine, why don't somebody go out and kill him? And the brothers heard and the king heard and, and the king tried to talk him out of it. Saul, he said, this guy was trained as a young boy to be a soldier. Not to mention the fact he's massive, huge. And David said, now David's just a kid. He's not even a man, really. He's just a kid. And he tells the king, he says, hey, I killed a lion and a bear. No problem. The king said, well, at least take my armor. It didn't fit him. He says, I can't fight with somebody else's stuff. I got my sling. I'm ready. So he gets out there, and here's Goliath. And what does Goliath say to him? He starts bad-mouthing him and all this. And you know what David starts doing? Calling in the promise. And says, Goliath, I want you to know that today I'm going to cut off your head and feed it to the birds. But remember this, David didn't have a sword. All he had was a sling and some rocks. How are you going to cut off his head? He's calling in the blessing. He takes that thing, that rock, and flings that thing, and he hits him on the head, and it didn't kill Goliath. That rock didn't kill him. It knocked him unconscious. And this giant falls to his face unconscious, and David's got to get this get his head cut off before he wakes up and he goes over there grabs his sword Goliath's sword probably had a hard time just bringing it up cuts off his head picks up his head yeah and all the enemies ran off praise God I like this story but he called it in he called in the blessing I hear so many people they're calling in everything but God's word and we live in a time we need to accelerate in this. In other words, people, you got to have a reputation. Don't be around them. They're always calling in the blessing. They're kind of fanatical. We need to be that way to restrain the evil one. Because there's such a, uh, we are the dam that's keeping evil from flooding this world. We got to call in law and order. We got to call in justice. We got to call in the things that are righteous and true and good 
in the culture that we live in right now. We got to do that. I love the verse in Proverbs where it says, hope deferred makes a heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Desire fulfilled in the Greek or Hebrew, it means you see it coming. You see it coming. How do you see it coming? Every time you call it in, it's coming. As long as you keep calling it in, it keeps coming. It may be on the horizon, maybe over the next mountain, whatever, but it's coming in. You got to just call it. Here's another verse. You have not because you ask not. Let me change it up. You have not because you don't call it in. Start calling it in. Start calling it in. Yeah, I'm losing that weight. No problem. Praise God. Thank you, the Lord is promoting me one day at a time. The Lord is bringing increase in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Call it in. Don't allow what you see to mess you up because there's a principle you need to remember. We all eat from the fruit of our lips. And some of us have been eating sour grapes, rotten apples, things that don't taste good. It's, it's a discipline, I think, more than anything is we have a choice. We get all this input. We feel this, whatever. What are we going to say about it once it happens? We need to declare what God's word says. Call it in. Yeah, I know it looks bad, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God will not leave me or forsake me. God is leading me in success. Nothing can harm me as long as I'm following the will of the Lord. No virus can take me out, praise God, because God's word said that no one will be a me or plague come nigh that had 20. You got to focus in on that Amen. instead of being scared of everything. That doesn't mean you don't use common sense but you don't live your life out in fear. You live it out in faith. Amen. You know, if my wife was sick and she was uh, critical or whatever, I would risk my life to be with her. I would sit in there, I'd kiss her, whatever. I, I'd risk my life to be with her. If she was contagious, I'd still risk my life. You know why? Because she means everything to me. I would do the same thing with God. When they start telling me I can't worship God, I'm going to worship God. When they start telling me we, I can't preach the truth, I'm going to preach the truth. You know why? Because I love God, and God is bigger than anything that I'm facing in my life, praise God. And the gospel will come out. Sure, they may take it off Facebook, but they won't take it out of me. And we're going to keep preaching the word, preaching the truth. So that God's people, because we are restraining force in this world that makes a difference. Let me close with this. There was a preacher. He had a vision of a big church. But the problem was the site that he was on, he had a building, but it just wasn't that big. And the, on part of the site was this huge mountain on his site. And so it took up all the parking spaces that they needed and so the, but the pastor says I want to build a church and he tried to get it through the permit process and they said I'm sorry you don't have enough parking and so he called the church together and he said listen I want you guys to come out and we're going to pray and I think about 300 people showed up and they prayed and they spoke to the mountain and the, mark, the mountain was not enough parking and they called in the parking he called it in they said, thank you, Lord, for the parking that we need for our new building. Thank you, Father, for it. I give you praise for it. I rejoice. And they begin to declare it. The whole church, they said, probably thought they were nuts. Just call in the parking, call in the parking, call in the parking, call in the parking. A couple of days come by, and a contractor comes to his, the church. He said, can I talk to the pastor? And they say, well, sure. And, and the pastor comes and says, can I help you? He says, listen, we're doing some construction over here, building some new homes, and we need some fill dirt. Can I buy that mountain of dirt on the church property or can I buy it? I will remove it and I will pay you for all the dirt that I take off. He said, well, let me think. 
He said, yeah, they came in, they flattened that thing out. He got all the parking. Why? Because he wasn't afraid to call the blessing in in his life. He didn't care what people thought. He didn't care what people, you know, wrote about, put on, put on an email. He didn't care about that. He knew the word of God. He knew what the will of God was, and that is to increase. So he declared it, and when he declared it, it released the power of God. We need to do the same thing in the church, in our lives. People say, oh, the crime rate is up. Kids are on drugs, school system's bad. I know all that. But we need to call in the blessing over our children, over our lives, because we are the restraining force. You know, I love to get up in the morning and call into my life things that I'm believing God for. I love it. I love to call in health. I love to call in long life. I love to call in uh, success, opportunities. And I think too often we, don't, we find ourselves calling in everything else. We keep talking about our worries, keep talking about our fears, and we don't realize we're actually attracting them to ourselves. We are, you know, it's kind of like that saying, you know, you don't, you don't speak to your mountain, you know, with the doubt and unbelief, but you tell the mountain how big your God is. And, and when you start speaking life, when you start speaking who God says you are, you know, that gets into your mind. You're renewing your mind and then you'll gravitate to the goodness of God rather than all the chaos, all the disappointments, all the discouragement that's going around us. You know, uh, there's so many voices out there. We want to hear God loud and clear you know we talk about still small voice but actually if you take time and you really listen it's pretty loud when God Amen. speaks. Amen. Praise God. Listen we want to invite all of you to come on out to our services. We have them on Sunday at 9 11 and also on Wednesday and I want you to understand about something about worship and hearing the word. It is essential. Uh, one time I was being interviewed by a person on channel 13 uh, on the TV and they said is the church should it be essential? I said absolutely. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Uh, what America needs today is people that will worship God and, and feed on His word so that we can change things and believe for great things. So it's essential that you worship. It's essential you hear the word. It's essential that you fellowship in the house of God. And we want to encourage all of you to do so. Listen, we love you so much, and we'll see you next week at the river.